Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day. It has been a little while. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I wanted to make a video dedicated to the Death Guard Hellbrute because I've had it painted up for a little while now and I haven't really showcased it. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you might have seen some of the live streams that I did. I did live stream the whole painting of it. I think it was like four or five videos off the top of my head. And I also made a video on how to magnetize it, which is just in, like another thing I love about the Hellbrute. It has so many weapon options. So yeah, I wanna go over like some of its weapon options, some of its abilities, some of the ways that I've been using it over the last wee while. And uh, yeah, let's, let's jump straight into it. Okay, first off, something really new. I ended up buying a green screen, which I've been having a lot of fun with just trying and like play around with things one thing that i will say is i did not think about what would happen when i put my green halberd in front of a green screen so you can see i'm not actually too sure which side it's going to be on um but but something funny has gone on and my halberd has all of a sudden become chaos undivided <laughs> but there'll be there'll be some pictures and things later on of what it actually looks like okay but i'm um, talking about the build i think this halberd looks so cool i think it's such a cool model and like i mentioned there is so much customization available with it just with the amount of weapons that it has so it is really fun to paint and put together i quite enjoy magnetizing things and i feel like this was one of the few kind of like units in our army where we actually have a reason to magnetize a lot of the options i'm trying to think if there's anything else i've got a couple of like war dogs which i've magnetized um my plague burst crawler i did magnetize like the flamers uh, and the entropy cannons but other than that there's not really a whole lot that comes with a lot of different options but even our units that have a couple of options i feel like a lot of our units are kind of like one trick ponies whereas the halberd there is so many different ways that you can build it kind of similar to like how we can build our plague marines like you can go for a super shooter you can go for a very melee and i think that's very similar to the halberd where there's not a whole lot of kind of like clear direction as to how it should be played it's very much a kind of like pick and choose and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> now a couple of the downsides to the Halbert is that it is kind of expensive. It's 140 points for what it is and, and with that 140 points you only get 8 wounds. I, I think that's its biggest downfall is it doesn't have a whole lot of survivability. You know when you compare it to like some of like the uh, dreadnoughts and things that space marines can bring it just it can't really stand up to those guys. Um, and it's kind of hard to find a place for it in the army at that price point. You know, if you're looking for something that can deal a lot of uh, melee damage, uh, we've got so many op other options which are at a cheaper price point. If you're wanting something that can, you know, do a lot of range damage, again, we've got a few other options which can do it at a cheaper price point uh, and can do it better. So yeah, it's kind of like one of those things where although you, we do have so many different options for the Halbert, there's not really a whole lot of things that it excels in, kind of. I, I think it does pretty well in certain matchups and we'll kind of go over that a little bit. But yeah, th those are kind of like the downsides to it. Moving on to some of the good parts. So the Halbert has three abilities, essentially. The first one is called Infused with Blessings of Nurgle. And this is pretty much the reason why you bring a Halbert if you're gonna bring one into your army. And the way this works is that after you've shot with the Halbert, out of all the enemy units that you've shot at, you can choose one of them and that unit will be infected until the start of your next turn. So it's really good at kind of getting that contagion out across the field. And there are a couple of ways that I've been using this in the past which have really helped me. And one of the ways is um, using it to support allied units because obviously allied units don't have our death guard contagion naturally so if for example i've got a brigand or a carnivore and they want to try take on something that's toughness 12 right because the brigand's got a strength 12 melter so when you're rolling to wound you're, you're typically wounding on a on a four whereas if you tag it with the contagion all of a sudden you bring it down to toughness 11 and it just makes it that little bit easier for uh, some of our other allied units and also other units that are shooting from range i think another thing about Another kind of like downside to Death Guard's contagion is that the only way to really spread it is to get closer <laughs> to your opponent. Whereas the Halbert brings another way to kind of like spread it across the board. So if you do have like a very shooty army um, and you're trying to set up things like Boil Blight, you know, you can tag them with the Halbert uh, and then you can do all kinds of good stuff with that. Another way I've used it in the past is uh, defensively. So majority of the time I do take the minus one to save uh, contagion, but from time to time I will take the minus one weapon skill, ballistic skill, all right as well. And the way that I like to work that is if the enemy's got like a super strong shooty kind of unit, 
Um, I'll shoot it with the Halberut to get that minus one weapon skill, ballistic skill. And if that unit targets anything in their turn, then I can use something like Cloud of Flies and essentially make it minus two to hit, uh, which can make a huge difference. Especially if you're applying it to someone like Mortarion who is just like super tanky in his own. So yeah, I do love the fact that you can use the Halbrut's ability to be like aggressive or defensive. I think it presents like a lot of opportunities for, for big plays, which could potentially catch people off guard, you know? Now the second ability that the Halbrut has is called Engaged Impact. Uh, basically, if you charge into something at the end of your charge phase, uh, you can choose one of the units that you charged into, then you roll a D6. On a two up, you can do D3 Mortal Wounds. Uh, to the opponent which which is kind of nice you know i think the halberd kind of needs as much support as it can in, <laughs> in some situations so it's always nice to be able to dish out a few few more mortal wounds especially if you, you tie that in with something like tank shop yeah, you could really dish out quite a lot of models. And then one other thing is it does have an ability called Halbrute Fist. So um, if you do take two Halbrute Fists with you, uh, then they get twin linked, which is kind of cool. I can't say I've ever done it before, but I, I might have to try it out sometime. Going into some of the weapon options that you can actually take with the Halbrute, uh, I'm going to break this down into kind of like ranged and melee. Now, when it comes to ranged, the Halbrut isn't the best at dishing out damage um, with its ranged attacks, but when you've got the Halbrut and you're, you're shooting at things, you're not necessarily thinking of trying to kill things, right? The main point of shooting something with the Halbrut is to uh, try and tag it so that it, uh, so that it ends up in contagion range. Uh, so what I've done is try to calculate the hit percentage on, for each of the weapons, and I've made a bit of a, a table to kind of show you like the max range of each weapon and the hit percentage uh, for each of them. Now the way I've calculated this I am not very good at math at all so I, I wasn't able to calculate this through probability or anything like that I'm sure there are much smarter ways to do this what I have uh, essentially done is picked up a dice I have rolled it so for example with like the twin auto cannon two attacks I've got two dice I've rolled it if it's two hits it counts as a hit if it's one hit it counts as a hit if it's um, two misses it doesn't count as a hit and I've kind of like tallied it all up and put it all out there just so it's kind of like digestible I know this probably isn't the best way to do it at all and might not be like a super accurate way to kind of showcase this information but I think for the most part it kind of like tells the right story and so like looking at some of the numbers you, obviously uh, with the heavy flamer at 12 inches you um, it's auto hit so within 12 inches if you've got that heavy flamer you have 100% chance of spreading that contagion um, I should have mentioned as well uh, if you take a health brute fist yeah you, uh, you get the option to take a heavy flamer or a plague combi bolter which is kind of nice going into those mid-range weapons the 18 and like the 24 inch range you can see that uh, the multi melter the plasma and the uh, plague combi bolter you can see i was getting kind of like high 80s low 90 percent hit rate you know which i'd say is pretty reliable unfortunately death guard don't really have a whole lot of ways to uh, increase their hit rolls. The only way you can really do it is by using something like Boil Blight, but that gives you heavy, so then you either have to stay still or you need kind of like Mortarion around you so you can ignore the modifiers. When we get to that 36 to 48 range, you can see Twin Plague and Missiles and Twin Auto Cannon also have that high 80, low 90% hit rate. Uh, it's only the Twin Laz Cannon which uh, is a bit lower because obviously you only get um, one shot and you are hitting on freeze, so you know you've got one third chance of just missing that completely but yeah looking at this you'd pretty much i'd say you're pretty much okay with everything you, any option any ranged weapon you go for the only thing i would suggest maybe not going for would be the twin las cannon i don't think there's much benefit in bringing that and maybe not the flamer just because it's got quite short range uh, unless you're bringing an, an, a different gun and you wanted to make sure you had like a guaranteed hit uh, if you were using your Halbrut uh, as like a defensive piece for example. Now one thing to note is that all of these numbers are based on an unmodified um, hit rate for the Halbrut and I think all of his guns they are hitting on freeze. Yeah he doesn't have any fours not for his ranged weapons. Okay now going into the Halbrut's melee weapons the Halbrut actually has some pretty decent options um, when it comes to melee. You've got the fists um, and you've got the hammer and you've got the scourge and the fist and the hammer they are pretty strong weapons tough, uh, strength 12 strength 14 I believe um, they both have a lot of potential to do a lot of damage so I think for those two weapons the ideal target is probably like a rhino or a predator or a war dog and these examples that I'm bringing up uh, are based on uh, something with a, a free up save no involve which I believe most of those predator tanks and war dogs are sitting at 
So, you know, looking at the numbers here and um, starting off with the Halberd Fist. So we were hitting on freeze, we were wounding on freeze and uh, saving on fives because it was minus two to save. So you can see that 16% of the time, absolutely nothing happened at all. 32% of the time we got one wound through. 37% uh, of the time we got six wounds through, which is um, essentially two wounds. Two wounds at three damage each. I probably should have worded this better. 13% managed to get nine wounds. 2% got 12 wounds, which to outright kill like a war dog or a rhino or predator, they usually have like 10, 11 or 12 wounds. So you can see here that the Halbert has a very, very low chance of killing one of those vehicles based on unmodified stats just on his melee weapon. Now, if you take into consideration that you could potentially do D free uh, wounds on the chard and if you take the minus one to their save as well they will obviously bump these numbers up even further because they'll be saving on sixes not fives you know taking those into consideration i i think these numbers would be a, a bit higher i still think it would be quite rough for a hell brute to just charge into it like a, a brigand for example and just kill it outright but um there, there's always a chance now, when looking at the hammer, um, the hammer is a bit stronger, but it is hitting on fours. Um, you're still wounding on threes if you're going into something like a war dog. You do have minus three AP, so they are saving on sixes. Uh, and you can see here that 22% of the time I flunked everything and didn't do any wounds. 36% of the time got one wound through. Now, the, the hammer actually has D6 plus one damage. So... For every wound that you do, you could potentially do two to seven damage each. There is a lot of killing potential there. Uh, you can see I had 28% of my rolls got two wounds through, which if I rolled high on those wound rolls, I uh, could have taken out a um, uh, one of those lighter vehicles. 13% uh, on uh, free wounds, which at the moment I think this is painting quite a very similar picture to uh, the, the first. You can see 0% uh, for four, four wounds, but I somehow managed to get 1% <laughs> on five wounds, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and geez, the potential there for damage, you know, 10 to 35 wounds. If you rolled high on those wound rolls, like even Mortarion would have a very tough time, you know, taking like that kind of punishment. Obviously he has an involve, so he wouldn't be saving on sixes, but like most things that are hitting on fours, um, they are very swinging. And I don't believe Death Guard have a way of improving their hit roll in melee, which is really unfortunate um, outside of the Tallyman. So yeah, if you, if you like to roll the dice, I, I think the hammer could be a good choice. Okay, and then we've got the Power Scourge. And the Power Scourge is more of an anti-infantry weapon. Uh, it's got flat two damage, which is um, pretty good at taking out things, you know, like, like um, Space Marine infantry, like Plague Marines, like those kind of like power armor guys. Um, you're hitting on freeze. You're most likely wounding on freeze. Uh, potentially even wounding on twos if you're bringing their toughness down one uh, but they would be saving on fours because you only have minus one ap unless you take that contagion and looking at the numbers here you can see that the power scourge unmodified is kind of okay at least at getting a couple of wounds through i think it would struggle quite a lot to get through like a whole five or seven man squad of infantry but again if, if you take into consideration the fact that you can get a few mortal wounds off a charge and if you're wounding on twos instead of threes that would bump these numbers up quite a lot and if they're saving on fives instead of fours then this is bumping them up again i think in, even taking that into consideration you probably wouldn't wipe a whole squad but you could do quite a lot of damage i, I guess the point i'm trying to get to with uh, by showcasing all of these numbers is that the halbrut on paper looks like it does have quite a lot of decent damage output but i think it struggles to kind of take things on one on one uh, whereas like someone like the Space Marine Dreadnoughts and things like you can kind of just throw them into anything by themselves and they'll do absolutely fine. The Halbrut is not like that at all. Um, it doesn't have an invol. It does have a two up save which is quite nice uh, because there aren't many things out there really that have more than like AP3. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen AP4 outside of Death Guard yet. You know so you're at least always saving on like a five and if you're getting shot at you know, even at a LAS can AP minus three, yeah. if you've got cover, it's only AP minus two. So potentially got that 50-50 chance of, of saving anything. But yeah, only only having eight wounds really hurts. And it just, I think the Halbrut just becomes very easy to kill. So you do have to be quite mindful about kind of how you place it, where you place it. Make sure that if you are like popping out to shoot something that you're not in range of anything that could absolutely just kill you <laughs> in one shot or or could charge you you definitely don't want to be charged as a halberd you want to be the one charging 
and which makes me think like the best way to probably play it is as more of like a defensive piece so it's in your kind of like back to mid lines holding the back lines you're just taking your your shots um, as you can across the board to support the rest of your army and then maybe you're coming in late game to try and like clean up because although you might not be able to one-shot things with the halberd you can see by looking at the numbers there is a whole lot of potential to do a lot of damage so if if we were going into tanks and things at at half wounds I think the halberd would do really well in those situations so keeping it back for the first few turns and having it come in the later turns to kind of sweep through the table and uh, clean up a bit is how i think is the best way to play it currently now in terms of like the loadout that i like to bring along i think to get the most out of the halberd you want to make sure that it has as much range as possible when shooting the contagion across the board so you definitely want to go for one of the 48 inch options um, whether that is the twin auto cannon uh, the missiles or the twin las cannon um, out of these three i would probably not take the twin las cannon because it only has one shot so it's got the most chance of missing uh, but the missiles and the twin auto cannon uh, have have about like 90 percent hit rate um, so which is a pretty good chance to spread that contagion so I, i'd definitely go for one of those and then i'd want to make sure i bring one of the melee options and typically i go for the halberd fist uh, just because you do get that option to also bring a play combi bolter or flamer with it i do quite enjoy bringing the flamer just to get some auto hits in uh, and soften things up because i do play it as quite a defensive piece when i think about what could potentially coming into my back lines it's usually uh, things that can deep strike like terminators for example and so that's kind of like one thing i have in mind when loading out my halberd with like the twin auto cannon and the fist because those are both flat free damage weapons so every hit that you get through uh, actually makes quite a difference um, and having the auto hit flamer is just a nice little touch i don't think you'd get a whole lot of value out of the plague combi bolter into things like terminators or you know other heavy units that might be coming into your back lines if there are any like light infantry units coming into the back line halbert would have no issue at all tidying them up but yeah i think i have covered pretty much everything that i wanted to say about the halbert i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this today i tried to put a little bit more effort into today's video and if you haven't um, played around with the halbert much in 10th edition yet i definitely recommend uh, trying them out and also if you guys have got any recommendations or different ways that you use the halbert that i've completely missed uh, please let me know i'd love to hear more about how you guys are using them too but anyway if you made it this far into the video i just want to say thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and i look forward to seeing you guys again sometime soon i'll see you around